rolling. I do look like the pale orc this week. Very pale man in the middle of winter. Oh, let me get settled. Sip my tea. <laughs> and here we go. And we're into it. Ring rust, bit of ring rust. Bit of, yeah, all right, fucking hell, that was a slow start, wasn't it? Um, hello and welcome back to season two of the Altered States podcast. I think it's episode 22 now. Is it? Was sacred right power through. number. Is it? What's the My number? sacred power number anyway. <laughs> double, two, double numbers. 22, always, 22, of course, yeah. They always carry some, some heat. Um, but yeah, welcome Enjoy. back. We had a little break over Christmas. I, I had to off, show, we had a month off. Month off, but we're, uh, we're back. With a vengeance, or well, maybe not with a vengeance, but we're, we're back. We're certainly back, yeah. What a timid way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we come whimpering yeah. back, tail between the legs. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was good. It was nice to have a break. Harry, uh, you get up to much? Um, went back to London for, well, I have an operation. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think, you just, I I think you just had it. Just had it, and I did one. Yeah, went, well, I had the operation, went home, and normally we get like a day off uh, for Christmas. Let's go back a bit now, actually. It's like a month ago, yeah. but we got a full week, which was unbelievable. Very relaxed. It's quite a heavy time of year normally Christmas, but I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, kind of like in a more traditional sense. Even though I had to sort of be, when you like post, you feel a bit like knocked off. You have to be like proper careful, but you know it was good. What about you? You were you were only in like half a day back home, so you? yeah, two days. One sec, I got to ask you: Is Christmas just weird being a rugby player? Like you got because. Normally you play, right, Boxing well, Day? Boxing Day, yeah. Uh, play, well, to be fair, once you played on Christmas Eve, uh, I actually wasn't selected. Uh, dark. Quite but I had to, <laughs> but I had to go to the game. I remember that was a really fun day. Because we had Christmas Eve and you knew you, you, knew you were done. Then we, we went out for a few drinks that night and then you had Christmas Day and Boxing Day off. Yeah. So it was sort of, it was a good one. There was, the weirdest one I had was when I was playing at Nottingham and we had a game on Boxing Day for like a championship club and we trained up until Christmas Eve. So I was in playing for Nottingham. So my parents and my family were up to Centre Park in like Macclesfield. Yeah. And I was driving back and forth and I was just on the road. Like, what am I doing? It's, a, it's like proper bleak. And we were like training the whole time. The pitch was just a, a cabbage patch. It was really yeah, a real it weird. Was a weird. Was sort of, that was the first taste of how was with, with uh, when we were at uni, we used to get a couple of weeks off, didn't we? And stuff yeah. like that. I think I played one game ever on Boxing Day, but it was, I was like 16. You know, then like all you want to do is play rugby, so it's not, it's was not that an one, issue. Was that like a I think it was, Penarth versus Penarth veterans game? <laughs> no. Something like that. It, no, it was actually uh, Cardiff Blue South versus Cardiff Blue North. Horrible so game. Grudge, grudge match. It was a grudge match. I think it ended 9-6 as well. Oh, nice, no, sure. Like, That's how you want it. <laughs> Horrific day. What did you have for Christmas dinner that day? What do you mean? It's like bolt. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> the, bolt. my Christmas dinner, I always say it's, it's the meal that sets me up for the following year. It's like my, it's literally my favourite meal of the year. Is it? Yeah. See, but the thing and is that, that you can do something which is, you're, you're a multi-meat roaster. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, to me, is, I wouldn't say sacrilege, but not far off. What's your, so is it strictly turkey on your Christmas dinner? Strictly turkey. Pigs, um, pigs and blankets. Pigs and blankets, stuffing. Yeah. My mum's like, I don't know, she has rules, which I thought were, were hard and fast, set in stone rules around the roast dinner. Yeah. And now I realise maybe they're just self-imposed, you know. Well, like, mate, the, the almost world, like a religious dogma. <laughs> we impose on ourselves. The, the world's your oyster when it comes to Christmas dinner. You can have whatever you want on there. We always have, we always have pork, sometimes we have beef. That's the thing, pork, like that's... The no, pig and the, the, pig and the cow people. on the same plate. Uh, yeah. We, no, 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 so, so we, we always have turkey. Yeah, and then we, have to, we usually have a, a secondary meat, which would be either uh, pork or beef. So, do you like do you like the turkey? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it makes a difference when you buy good quality turkey for sure. Of course, 100%. Yeah, of course. No, but I mean like you know, the giblets, You're eating the giblets, right? Turkey, you're not throwing them away. No, I, I, I've got to be honest. I, did, I, did the, I ate the giblets raw for the <laughs> start. <laughs> Right. I'll tell you what you're the, amount, the amount of people, right? I don't think like I'd ever seen anyone eat any raw meat, and then like now, at least twice a week, I get a video pop up on my Instagram of someone eating like raw. So I had a video of this guy eating raw brain the other day, so like the most miserable man on the planet. <laughs> someone said it to me. Well, man, I, I, I have the raw liver sashimi. Yeah, 
Uh, as, as I told you, uh, yeah, the maple syrup makes a big difference. Liver King's a fraud, man. It does occasionally eat it without, without a maple syrup, but it makes all the difference. Really? Like, yeah, it was, I had to spit one piece out and I had to have very small pieces. The texture's, it's an alien texture. Yeah, so I've eaten liver pretty raw before. Like, you know, the center's raw. So I, I, I know what you're talking about. But yeah, that... I can imagine it's a bit of a mental challenge to. No, but I was sort of when I was eating, I was thinking I'm ruining this for myself. I'm gonna get the. Do you ever get that when you have a food, and you get the ick with it? Yeah. And then you never want to eat it again, yeah. ever. Yeah. I had it with cider. Have have it with white wine as well. They're drinks, obviously not not so. I'm trying to think of the food that I have it with. Can't greedy bastard coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I love them all. No. <laughs> I tell you what it was. This is a very, it's quite a bougie example. We got this. Um, it, it's that fake chocolate you eat, caribou. What's it called? Oh yeah, um, carob. Carob, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ming. I got it with you that. Think it's just don't like it. I just got the it with it. So don't think it tastes horrible. It's all right. No, it's not. It's not that it tastes horrible. It's, it's you can appreciate at one point you liked it, but then just you when you have it too much, you just go off it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get that. No, but the whole thing was my mum with roast is so if you had a beef roast or a lamb roast you have Yorkshire pudding yeah but you wouldn't have a Yorkshire pudding with a poultry roast with poultry roast you'd have stuffing and pigs in blankets why not because it's just the way it's like the rules of the roast but Yorkshire puddings are great man why wouldn't you want one with <laughs> some chicken I like Yorkshire puddings like loads yeah, yeah I just my feel, granddad I just feel like you're my granddad on my used to make homemade Yorkshire's they were like massive. Yeah. They extend to these huge, and I used to have them. I, I, I like, in fact, I also like having the roasted inside of Yorkshire pudding. You ever had that? Yeah, yeah, like sort of toad the whole style. Like toad the whole style. Yeah. But, um, well, those mini Yorkshire puddings with like a little bit of beef and the ball dry oh, you get. Jesus, that's good finger. Some, that. some, some that's sort really of good finger. Events. Um, like an hors d'oeuvre. Yeah, like an hors d'oeuvre. I think no, like, but you, so on your Christmas dinner, everything, the. No, so it's just this year we had turkey and pork, a bit of crackling, stuffing, of course. We did, I don't think we had Yorkshire's, but, the, this, but this, we, made, we may have. This is the issue that I have, right? They go with different things. Though. So with turkey, you've got the cranberry, with pork, you have apple sauce, and they have different accoutrement that goes with them. Yeah, I just don't agree. I understand, I, but I just feel like this is some weird limitation we put on food. It's just like when people, I you know, I'll occasionally have like a steak for breakfast or something. People look at you, gone off like that's not breakfast food. Not why not? But it, that's, James said it is breakfast food. Yeah, fucking right, it's breakfast food because it's yang. Well, yeah, it's, it's get up and go for the zippy food. It's get up. the way I look at breakfast is I want stuff that's making my dopamine pop off, and red meat does that. So why not have some steak and and then what the evening you have your fishes fishy dish. Yeah, Chicken. I've been eating my favorite. My favorite go to at the moment is I have. Um, I'm actually gonna make a little video of this. It's the chicken hearts with uh, bone broth and white rice. So good, man. You Where do you get the chicken it. hearts from? So I got pipe. I got pipe. Yeah, some pipers. Yeah, whole type pipers. Ten pounds off. Yeah, eight, eight ten. Yeah, eight, ten, ten pounds. Ten pounds off. If anyone's interested, that's good quality. Real situation. Good quality, Very good quality situation. Yeah, so we're gonna go there actually. Oh, here we are. Yeah, we're gonna do a video. Yeah, we're gonna go. Uh, well, hopefully next month, and interview the owner. Pete. That'd be good. And uh, yeah, and, and check the farm out and make a little film. Hopefully, if we can bring Peter with us. Yeah, that'd be really. I'd yeah. be really up for doing that. Yeah. Cool. What was the um? So you went back for two days Christmas. Yeah, just went back for two days. Saw my family. It's really, really nice, man. And then it was just here with his really like. It's just nice to have wine because with uh, eight, it's it's so full on year round, especially with the packaging which yeah. we've got outsourced now, but. At the that point, so Christmas is the only time you really get to take a few days off because like the postal service goes dead and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it was, it was just nice to put our feet up, and then it's been coming back. It's been like a massive change because we outsourced our distribution to distribution center. Yeah, that's going to that's massive news. Big that's step. For us. News. Yeah, yeah, a massive step for us. So and and it's just been a huge weight off and it's, it's made it's given us loads of time because we had loads of projects kind of like in the pipeline that we just didn't have time to execute and now we just started running them all so you know over the bone the, matrix we've got two products pork. on the table there that are coming out next week or they'll be on pre-sale next week bone matrix liver bone I, matrix. eyeball bit of eyeball liver no eyeball yet unfortunately we've got oysters coming out 
next month or the month after. It depends on how long they take to uh, get made up, but they're all, that's like done and dusted. And then we got a few more kind of in the pipeline, but it's mainly content, man. We're like redoing the website. We're, re- we're bringing out a new brand trailer. We got, uh, we're going to start producing like loads of nose tail content because we're just thinking about it, kind of like brainstorming and it's, it solves so many issues at the moment, especially if you're buying like nose tail meat from regenerative farms. Yeah, yeah. You obviously this, and we discuss this in depth on the Andy Morden episode. You got all this uh, sort of data coming out showing how beneficial regenerative farming is for the environment. You know, it's the highest standards of animal welf- welfare, and also for humans like consuming the meat. Mm. Um, but I think like one of the biggest issues at the moment is like as a population, we're overfed and undernourished. You know, there's like an obesity epidemic, and also we're extremely like wasteful eaters. Mm. You know, so much stuff gets thrown away so the nose tail for me it just gets both of the things because it's so nutrient dense that if people were eating that stuff you know you wouldn't because because they're eating real food with high levels of nutrients their body understands it's satiating uh so you know you're not going to overeat liver like you're going to overeat oreos yeah so yeah gonna, is it could be a massive solution to that problem and then also it's almost like these are all off cuts that are going to waste and just like uh, making people understand that and, and getting people to incorporate it into the diet it, it solves so many problems for me it really ticks a lot of boxes so. do, you, do you feel it's better to eat the product as is rather than take the caps so you know ideal case scenario people are eating organ meats you know in their the diet the entire time yeah well they're just in, you know implementing them in their diet like you know three two three times a week maybe four times a week it's, seen, like it's not seen as a strange thing to do just to have it in a meal you know I mean that sort of gets a bit of a rebrand yeah. Which I suppose it is kind of happening. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. No, you see, well, you've seen it in restaurants in London, you know, like it's a big thing now because everyone's playing to that. And I don't think people are even playing to it. It's like with these small businesses, people are genuinely becoming really conscious and aware of what they're doing. Mm. So you've got these like, you know, uh, restaurants, especially, you know, sort of cool upcoming restaurants in, in London. They, they're getting, they sort of developing this idea and they're using a lot of offal in their meals. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, if you can eat it a few times a week, then that's great. But the beauty of the caps is like a lot of people don't like the taste. Um, and a lot of people, the reality of the situation is even if they set out saying, oh, I'm going to eat all the meat a couple of times this week, the reality is they don't often do it. So the beauty of having the caps in the drawer is like, if you don't, you can just top up with them. I find it weird. With, I'm not sure if it's in that palatable or whether it's because our... Uh, because we don't eat much of it, we don't find it particularly enjoyable to eat. Yeah. Because if you had a kid and you fed them awful from like a young age, whether they would enjoy having it the older they got. Yeah. See, it's not. It's not. I do eat. I do eat it probably two or three times a week, maybe yeah. more sometimes. But it isn't my favourite thing to eat by any stretch. Like, it isn't that nice? Yeah. I was wondering if that's because I'm not conditioned to eat it. You know what I mean? So I was brought up uh, on my dad used to cook liver like once a week in the house. Um, so I love lamb's liver. Like I, I really like yeah. it. I, you know, I cooked it for myself all my life. Like even when I was at uni, I was I would probably have it once a week just because I enjoyed it. And then when I started sort of branching out, trying other stuff, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of other things. But I've like come to. Re- I'm a huge fan of chicken hearts now. It's probably my favorite. Yeah. Uh, awful meal. I'm cooking that like once a week. Or, sorry, twice a week at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely like quite a taste you can get. So the pigs is always very strong. Yeah. I had a pig's heart. It was big. And it tasted quite strong. Of you know, definitely, definitely had a, a quiet taste. Yeah. Is there any part of an animal you wouldn't eat? So I ate brain once, and uh, the thought of eating brain again makes me feel a little bit sick. Uh, it's just the texture of it. And what about what about the arsehole? And it, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you mean? But I just. <laughs> Well, when we're talking about awful, the whole thing behind it is it's like super nutrient dense. I think the our asshole would have a massive <laughs> amount to offer in in, uh, in uh, the way of nutrients. But mate, the brain is like it looks like a brain on the plate. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And then you just it's the visual when you're cutting it up and stuff. I've had I've had we had awful day down at Exo Cooking School, and I had a bit of long. And I was a bit, it tasted like I was eating like a kitchen sponge that had been cooked yeah. in blood. Very strong tasting blood. Yeah. That was that was pretty minging. What animal? Lamb. 
It was a lab. We had every part. We had every. It was sort of. It was a four part series, and we had one day they did like this. They did like every day they did these. You know, over the course of weeks, they did these unbelievable meals, like two course meals. So we helped cook it and helped butcher this lamb. Yeah. And the last day was awful day, and it was just it was not good. I mean, awful stew. In fact, all the meals were this mad like glazed carrots and potato dough from wild and like stuff like that and yeah. just like awful stew on the last day probably a lot more nutrient dense but quite rank yeah, yeah. it had this like gelatin you think maybe they get out day one you know finish with a bang I think I honestly think I think they just planned had three good days planned and then just thought right we'll just give them and it, but the, whole, I mean, the novelty of the day was you could try any part you wanted to Yeah. if you wanted to try the arsehole you could have done yeah. you know we didn't we just stuck with some of the internal organs yeah. um, here's a question I was going to say to you before Sunbeds, good or bad? So, I am, I've never looked into it, and my knee jerk reaction is bad. <laughs> but like, I'm I'm thinking, just have I just kind of like seen that on the news? Yeah, and... That's that's one thing. Because I'm like, is it is it? Do you think you would? Because the sun, the light that comes from the sun is UV light, right? So, is it different because it's artificially created? So it's not. So it's, it's, your cells don't recognize it as the same thing. So, I. Don't know, but where I think it could be bad is so one of the one of the main issues from how I understand it with the sun is that it's not in terms of being out in the sun, it's burning. That's what like causes the damage. Yeah. So the problem with people, especially when they're from the UK or somewhere cold, they don't really expose themselves to the sun all year round. They're sat in an office and then they go on holiday to, you know, Mallorca for two weeks. And it's just bang on the beach every day, and they yeah. fry themselves. You can, I'm I'm that classic guy. You know, day one, you can tell I'm day one in, in, on holiday because I'm sat in the restaurant in the evening. I'm like yeah. glowing red, uh, and that's what causes the damage, the burn. So this year, you know, being self-employed, I was able to like in the summer or Go out and out, sorry, sorry, uh, just like as the weather was getting warmer throughout the year, you know, like yeah. April, May. I would just be out in the sun, out in the garden, even when it wasn't that hot. Yeah. And you build up like a base level of tan. And then as it gets into the summer, you've got this base level so you can be out in the sun for longer and uh, not burn. Uh, so yeah, I think that I think the, the key with the whole sun situation is like basically don't allow yourself to burn. So yeah. if you're going on the bed, well, I don't, so I've never been on a sun bed. Uh, but would you, would you go on one? No, probably not. I just, but I think it's because you've got a mental block. This like you, you're flipping the the kid <laughs> Christmas dinner out of my face, throwing it back in my face. So you feel better off. I'm telling you, I, I've done a few recently because I don't like. I kind of the go go for periods. I'm like, I want to get a bit tanned. Yeah, and I don't see what the big taboo is to be honest with you. So I go. I went down there. I'll tell you what. As a general rule, I've met the, the friendliest people I've ever met shop workers are people namely women in fact I've never met a male who works a uh, Italian salon they're always proper friendly yeah. they feel really at home it's a nice experience oh, they always sweet talk me into buying this tan <laughs> intensifier I didn't go that so, like, that's the darkness that's the darkness why is that the darkness what, so, it doesn't make me burn bro Okay. I, don't, I didn't burn yeah but it's, I think it's the chemicals you put so you're seeing more and more stuff coming out about like why you shouldn't use sun cream, sunscreen no, but this is the opposite of sunscreen this is the anti-sunscreen what it? it's tan intensifier it's, but what like what's in it do you know is there any ingredients on that box <laughs> just a picture of a skull and crossbones yes. that's the ingredient <laughs> that's all there is on the ingredients it's green it's like a luminescent yeah, green yeah, yeah, yeah. it is it's like Homer Simpson using Tr- tracks it around the nuclear power plant. <laughs> Mr. Burns trying to No, I, I, they uh, mainly, but they tell me that the that the UV rays soak into the sim- skin much quicker. It's kind of a bit of bro science, I think they give me. And I just, I obviously love bro science, so I eat it straight up. You know. Uh, how long do you go in for? Twelve minutes to fourteen. Is, minutes is that is that quite a long? It's time. a long dish, but I'm quite. I'm, I'm an olive skin breader. Like I don't. Yeah, you're not like I think I'd last about probably like four or five minutes for you, and I'd be fucked. Maybe you'd be alright, but then I, I do. I just think one every couple of weeks. I don't think is they, they, we're told how bad they are the whole time. But I actually don't know if they. I think surely if you're getting no UV light, right? It's been cloudy for the last week. It's good to get some, even if it's not the you know the real thing, the real yeah. coin. 
I use the the red light therapy device, which gives you a bit of that. Gives you a little. But is that that ain't, that ain't UV though, is it? it? Well, it's just I'm not I'm not again I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it just gives you access to different spectrums of light, and I've seen people talk on it. You know, it's not my area of expertise, but just saying like when it's cloudy in the winter, it's a good thing to. The thing I find basically is how is that any different from a Sunday? Well, you, it's never going to burn you. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you what, I'll look into that a little bit. Can you ask? I'll, ask around. I'll ask around this week, I'll come back. And just say the odd one. I'm not talking, I'm not saying I'm going, I have gone mental in my time. I once done, yeah, I've done a few. I once went very like kind of, uh, what was the guy called? David Dickinson. Bargain hunt. Don't pretend you know who that is. I don't. I, mean, I don't know who that from is. Bargain Maybe it's Harry guy from Bargain Hunt. You honestly don't know who that is? I honestly don't know who that is. I've never watched Bond. Like you pretend you don't know who <laughs> But I have no idea. Who you never watch any it. daytime TV? Yeah, I've watched. Oh, you, uh, yeah, I used to watch. Well, I used to watch when I got home from school. You know, I used to watch Simpsons. The Weakest Link with my dad. Yeah, Weakest Link. I actually think The Weakest Link is I always thought it was rubbish. And I think it's like, I can see why they stopped. I honestly don't think it's that good. Uh, and Robinson just mugging people off the whole time. What's the other one as well? Uh, the Chase. The Chase is good. Bradley uh, Walsh is his name. Yeah, it's Bradley, funny, the guy. Bradley Walsh, yeah, with the, and the big fella from, he was a the, te- beast. the Welsh teacher. The Beast. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He, um, I wasn't there at the time, but England did a, like a, a player's social, and he did like a chase, and went, he's a massive rugby fan. Yeah. So yep. he like the personal appearance for all the... I'm pretty sure he's a teacher at uh, Whitchurch High School, which is where... Oh, really? Sam Walton and Gareth Bale went. I, um... Do you know the people, the chase people who choose to take the minus money? Yeah, no. To stay on a not, team? Mate, that's not legal. I was thinking about it. What if they went into negative? Would they owe the chase money if they finished? Leave it a 10-year-old bill. Surely, yeah. surely that's just losing. You lose the game there. Yeah, but there's like, what's the point in... There's once a woman who stayed in us like that and she got offered it was like minus 20 grand. She was like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> And they, and they didn't win, of course, because they're this incredibly weak person. Yeah. I was like, you're literally there for the ride, aren't you? You're there, like, yeah, accepting I'm a complete dunderhead idiot. Do you think they let one person in there, like, right, we'll just let one idiot in that we know is going to take the negative money, get through, and then they're going to be the weak link? But they rarely win. They rarely, these guys are mad. Yeah. Their, level, their, their, their level of knowledge is actually, it's a bit nerdy, to, if, for want of a better yeah. word, but it is kind of it's expensive. expensive. That's the, you don't watch The Apprentice, do you? No, but I've I've watched in the past. I don't know why you deny anyone with the nine of the pleasure of watching The Apprentice. It's just, it's just a joy. Thursday night comes around, and I'm just, I'm, it's Wednesday now, and I'm just look, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. This is, <laughs> Already, this is my question for the The Apprentice. Is it's a complete joke, right? Now it is. Yeah, I think it used to be quite sick. People, you know, you got you used to have Kay Hopkins. She 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 was a really good candidate. She left the process. You had Ruth the Badger Badger. Yeah, I um, remember. Yeah, yeah, Ruth the Badger Badger. She was, she was. Uh, You're obviously a big fan. No, I watched it like years. Me and my dad uh, used to watch that. We watched the series of Ruth the Badger Badger, and uh, <laughs> but now it just seems that they've got this just kind of jokers on board for the most part. Yeah. Because, and also the, I think what was cool about it was you were getting a job at the end of it, a quarter of a million pound a year job, with Alan Sugar, who at the time was Sir Alan. Now yeah. he's Lord. Well, that's a bit. A bit of like cuckery, isn't it? Calling like Lord, sorry Lord, should be like. Well, he's an upgrade. He's an upgrade, yeah. He's gone in like I don't know the Terminator and come out with as the Liquid Terminator. <laughs> what? What for? Is it, is it just for his? Just being a sick, rich guy. I guess. <laughs> the more money you yeah, get, the more time he's rich. It's creases. Now he um, so they they all call him Lord Sugar now. They call him Lord Shit. Yeah, like literally, like honestly, like Wait, if uh, you if you got given the title Lord, would you kind of demand everyone to call you Lord? I'd like to say no, but <laughs> I feel that the f- <laughs> yeah. I need to ask Joe Simmons actually because he's got an MBA and he says he sign emails off or well, letters with that yeah. member of the British Empire. But they all call him Lord Sugar, and it just it does seem now they've got these just people, and and they and basically he goes in <laughs> and he take and they have. Business idea, and he takes up like, the business for an investment. So okay. The whole like where the show, the way the show's gone has changed. Yeah. Whereas I think it used to be good. You were like going for an actual job. I think that probably lost him money, and he didn't like it. Oh, so they've got like a, they go in with a business plan now. So right? you would go in with Ape. 
and then he would offer you a 250k investment for like a stake in your company. But based on how well you perform, how well you perform, slash doing, how good you business doing the plans. same. So the performance comes up to the last five, four or five candidates, yeah. and then he starts looking at the business plans. But you know, you, you must see the episode where they do the interviews. Yeah, and they just get like torn to shreds. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you chucked it up on your story, didn't you? You were pissing yourself that something happened. But yeah, the guy went in for a little hands in. Um, <laughs> you should never do unless you're certain everyone's going to join you. <laughs> how, how? Go for a hands in and then just got ignored, and it was. And I was like, oh, oh, did you just as my girlfriend? Did you see that? And then rewound it, and my eyes did not deceive me. He had been left left hanging, which is a real like it's a little shameful joy of mine to see people get left hanging. It's a horrible feeling though when it happens. <laughs> Mate, tell you what, I, well, actually, I'm not going to I was going to say I might watch it, but I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> now, but you're all watching like Star Trek and... Izzy um, loves Star Trek, I'm not a fan so of So you don't watch Star Trek? No, I don't watch it. I've, wa- I've watched a couple of episodes. Yeah, yeah. you'll sort of watch like, I don't know, science fiction and like kind of children's films, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I do like science fiction. <laughs> um, no, so, oh, let's, let's, get, let's get into this. Let's get into The Matrix Resurrection. Oh, man. Anyway, I haven't seen it. Oh my god. Spoiler alert, it's the worst film. Yeah, so if you haven't seen it, you have an intention of watching it, I'd say first off, don't go and watch it. And secondly, it's like, Jesus Christ, man. Like they didn't have to do they should have just left it. They should have honestly just left it. It's the worst fall from grace I've ever witnessed in relation to any television thing in history. I honestly I wouldn't if I was to rate it and I and I'm saying this, this isn't like an over the top reaction to me rating the film I honestly would give it 1 out of 10 yeah agreed I'd give it 10% of yeah, 10% percent Rotten Tomatoes is what I'd give it and it was, I didn't enjoy it because what, we, we watched it around Alex Alex house for a, <laughs> and there was some some technical issues when we had to change location but you were like we, at that point where it stopped we were like this, this could turn around and this could be really good yeah but I'm telling you now the Avengers and those Marvel films have ruined action films because now every action film has got to be a, a half comedy and the action sequences are all like wacky, like it's re- loads of CGI. The whole point of the original Matrix, which you know we're both huge fans of, was that the, the fight scenes, even the the latter films, which weren't considered as good, were still sick. And these were rubbish. Mate, if you're gonna put a joke in a non-funny film, it's got to be a banger of a joke. And <laughs> that moment where Neo tries to like fly and he can't fly. Oh no! Honestly, I, I a little. Part of me died inside when he did that. It was awful. That's the. It's look. That's the one. That's that's Neo. That's the one, man. He's the. Yeah. He's the guy to take everyone out of there. You know. I can't believe. I they can't didn't. believe. Well, I just. I had such. A respect for Keanu Reeves, and like I just can't believe he did it. I'm in shock. I thought he would have turned the role down. He just looked at the script and gone. Do you not no. think? This is where I said, "Oh, you know, money talks." Do you, think, do you think? Yeah, but then it's like yeah, I imagine he's he's a pretty wealthy guy. Yeah. But that, but then that's me they're taking the mick out of in the film, going, oh well, you know, they because they like take the piss out of themselves for making because the film concluded really nicely. That was the whole point. The trilogy's like concluded. The whole thing was wrapped up. Yeah. There was no reason to carry on. Yeah. Which uh, is actually to be fair, as I said, I've gone back and watched the other two Reloaded and uh, Revolutions. Is it Revolutions? Matrix Revolution, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the, the first one like about 500 times, but now I've got a whole new appreciation of how good they actually are. Yeah, Because I wasn't mad into them. And they just, it was just, it was just all wrapped up nice, a little bow on it, present, finished, didn't need to, did not need to make the film. And if they could have done it, they could have done like a prequel with all this, like Morpheus is running around, this different actor, and he's not really a guy, and he's like made out of little robots. Yeah. Like what is going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's that whole woke, like all the jokes and like, oh, it just made me feel a bit sick, to be honest. The jokes all the whole way through, which is like, all right, cool, well, I'll, I'll be seeing you then. Yeah. Man, the agents used to be nutty. They used to be like real scary. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have your landlady take out a garbage on He makes Neo's mouth cover up and stuff. It's all like proper scary. And now they're just these like dickhead clowns yeah. getting made fools of. Mate. You know, I think no, I don't know. It was it was bad in itself, but 
it was really bad in itself, but it was made worse <laughs> by the fact that the, we'd just seen June as well. Which, June did, did it, does it right. Yeah, I don't want to ruin it just in case people haven't seen it, but w- what a film. Very good, very good score. Very good. Like the way it's filmed is sick. Yeah, ridiculous. Doesn't doesn't it's a serious film, you know? There's not it's not funny. Yeah. I think I'm all for comedies, I really like comedies. Pineapple Express, very funny film. Yeah. There's a whole raw East Bound and Down. If anyone hasn't seen East Bound and Down, you have to watch it. That's probably yeah. the funniest thing ever made. Yeah. But if it's a comedy, just be a comedy. If you're an action film, be it, just do the thing you're doing. Yeah, they're staying. June there ain't one joke. I wasn't laughing for any of it. Yeah, there's no and there's no need. Perfect without it. Mate, you know that's so that first film is half of the first book and there's five other books. Oh, jeez. So you could be looking at a monster. Uh, sort of, uh, yeah, like a new Star Wars sort of situation. But I did, the thing is, is because it gets a lot of, uh, and I myself uh, are guilty. I've liked, I do like um, the one with Thanos, the first one with Thanos, Infinity War. Yeah. yeah. We've spoken about this before. I'm not sure. Well, if we have, we'll, we'll speak about it again. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good film, um, but it has just changed the whole way films are made. And yeah. June just didn't seem to follow that. It just was. It just told the story within the book. Yeah. I didn't have to have you know, like throwing a load of like shit jokes. Yeah. On top of it. Yeah. I don't. I, mean, I don't know what's going on. They need to. I, I think. I think. Do you like Marvel films? What would you? So I'm just trying to think. Yeah, there's some Marvel films. The Avengers, like. the, the Avengers is like the culmination. Culmination. Yeah, so, so, yeah. Some of them are good, and this, but it's like, I don't know. It's just where they they're branching that. It's not so much the the Marvel films. It's like this new style of, I don't know, with all the jokes and everything. I don't I don't even know how to label it. It's but just it's, the same, it's what it's what you're saying. All film and music and everything's just become homogenized. All it's like. Everything's just, it feels, I don't want to get preachy or anything like that. It's just, it's just, it is honestly how I feel about it. It feels like all the music and all the films and everything just kind of homogenized to just be the same as, or, or very similar to everything else. Yeah, there's so much it's of that. Different shade, it's just different shades, it's different shades of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Every single, like a, a film now is, is, is loads of CGI with sh- sort of shitty comedy script. Yeah. And I don't know, it always ends. Like happily, there's never a, there's never like a, any twists, just very linear, you know. Yeah. And music, I don't know if you were saying the other day or whether it was Alex or someone was that. It felt that. So we went down to this this shepherd's hut the other day, uh, me and my girlfriend. And we there was no reception, so I was just listening to music, saved on my phone. And one of the albums I've saved on my phone is uh, "Rumors" by Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. And I put it on and I was listening to it. And I was like, Phew. yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, they honestly these. People created something here, which was Mate, it's, it's, it's my mum listened to that when she was like 15, 45 years old. This music, yeah, and it could have been written, it, they are completely timeless. Basically, every song there, so it's really written half a century ago, and it, it's just stands up today, yeah. And you hear music now, and you're just like, This is yeah, it's dead, compared this to is it. shit, and it feels like it, it, but it's where they created it, they like played it, and like they refined it. And, Create this piece of art, I suppose you say. Now it's like done on a you like input these sounds into the system. Yeah. This is what the brain, this will react well with the blah 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 blah. And yeah. it creates it's just like poos out this this just you know garbage. Yeah. Apart from Travis Scott. <laughs> oh mate, that's a, <laughs> he gets an exemption. That's the broadcast in itself. But it's mate, that, you're hundred percent right. It's like that old school music was you know, it spoke to the soul and now you've just got this homogenized algorithm made mechanical stuff that it's like all right we're gonna if we you know put this note with this note we know it's gonna go to number one or it's gonna get played yeah, a bunch yeah. of times in the club and like that's the way they're thinking about developing music or i say they obviously it's very general this there, there is obviously really good music like i was listening to little sims's new album the other day sick. I think that's sick um and you know there is a lot of good there are some people making good music we're talking about like the the general the top 40 like yeah. baby food Music shit, absolute <laughs> shit. <laughs> it is. It is bad. Like it's not. And the thing is, you listen. You listen to a song from twenty eighteen. Yeah. And it's like this is rubbish. It just holds no. Yeah. It has. It's just. Um. What's the right word? So it substance. has. There's no substance to it. So like these songs, these rich so and you said the ultimate like rich, rich substancey songs would be symphonies. You know, like orchestra music. Yeah. 
Oh, you can hear some of them because my mum plays classic FM when I go home. She just has it on. And this is when you know, these were crazy like hundreds of years ago, and mm-hmm. people listen to them now. That is actually ridiculous. Yeah. So people can be listening to WAP <laughs> in like what two hundred years time. Yeah. That's just and I don't know that song was just you know that that encapsulates everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's all bit it's the same. The whole you, you can see this trend going through the whole thing because then the songs go into these TikToks which are just. Oh, it's just melting people's brains. Yeah, yeah. Completely, mate. Dopamine receptors getting fried left, right and centre. But I, I genuinely worry. Like I, I experienced it in my own brain over, <laughs> over the sort of leading up to, say, January when we outsourced. We were just getting busier and busier with work and I felt like I was spinning like 20 different plates at all times. Yeah. And I just couldn't quieten my mind. Like, I was finding it so hard. I was waking up in the middle of the night. I was just... It was just so much noise, so much static in my head. And then we've outsourced. And then since outsourcing, I've picked up meditating in the evening again. And I'm just like sleeping like a baby. Mm. I'm able to quiet my mind. Like I'll be going about, you know, and I'll, find, I'll notice, oh, my mind's thinking about all oh, that email I got somewhere. And I'll just be able to bring myself back. It doesn't matter, I'll just worry about it tomorrow. Yeah, and it's just like the peace in my head from it. You know what I mean? It just feels... It's just like night and day, the difference. And I worry about future generations that are just growing up where they don't know what that base level of like just quiet mind feels like. They're just used to this static. Constant, static, constant um, stimulation. Yeah. And because they've never tasted anything else, it's like, you know, it's what, how, why go searching for something you're not aware of? You know what I mean? Mm. It's worrying me. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the future holds for the human race. I don't know. Maybe we'll just be led by you know people choose to not do it. Be led by liver king who will actually <laughs> live like a king. We'll have to follow his rules. Yeah, the liver lord. Maybe yeah, you'll, get, you'll get you'll get upgraded. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go out there on his ranch. Yeah. You know the rules of the commune. The dark, <laughs> the dark rules of the commune. Um, we follow. Now we're segueing a little bit into uh, the the world of athletes. I wanted to I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the um, the knees over toes guy. I don't know much about him. Um, I've heard he's he's a hot property right now. He's a very hot property. <laughs> he, <laughs> he is actually. Bella messaged me. She's thinking about doing his program. Maybe. She said. Yeah, she bought his book. Oh, sick! And I said that you had some, or you had because a lot of the time, this isn't like in any way. Um, Shitting on knees over toes. I don't know anything about it. Hold tight knees over toes. Keep doing your thing. Earning your money. Living your best life. Yeah. Chasing your dreams. But you... <laughs> but you say... I'm sure you'll find that very but, inspirational. Yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure if I guess knees over toes, like, that'll, <laughs> help, that'll help him for uh, motivation. But the... You said that a lot of the programs are like rinse and repeat. He'll send you the same program to do for weeks in a row. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not talking from experience here. I know so Tim's done his like level one certificate and uh, potentially his level two as well. And and that's what Tim said. He said it's a lot of you doing maybe the same session multiple times a week, you know, sort of thing. Um, but I did. There's a, I believe a student of his, a guy called Aaron Lusk, who's like an ex NFL player. And he wrote a program which was like a combination of knees over toes plus NFL stuff. And I did his program for a couple of months and it was like really good, really enjoyed it. But it was kind of like a follow along in the season, like a year of his training. And I did, it starts with the preseason, which is really good. But then when it gets into the season, there's a lot of plyos and stuff like that. I just wasn't enjoying it as much, so I dropped it. But why I wanted to speak about knees over toes was he was on Rogan like yeah. a couple of weeks. Is that what? Spark she watched. She watched. She watched him on Rogan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he, I haven't watched yet, episode, but he had like two. You know, they do the JRE clips on YouTube, and they'll yeah, yeah, yeah. pick a couple of like key moments out of the episode. So I watched a couple of clips with the knees of the toes guy, and he tells kind of like his origin story in one of them. And in a nutshell, he was wanted to be a basketball player, wanted to go D one in in American college. Uh, he's couldn't. He didn't have like a very big jump. Or and I, and I think maybe he had bad knees as well. Or he, he definitely didn't have a big jump, potentially bad knees as well. Anyway, he wasn't going to go D1. So when he finished school at 18, he set about trying to rehab his knees. And he, that's when he came up with all the knees over toe stuff, you know, the split squats from yeah. the over the toe, the backward sled drags, and then what's the other things he 
It's quite famous. It was like Tiban, the, the Tiban Nord- stuff. Oh yeah, the Tib Tiban races. and the Reverse Nordics and, and the Normal Nordics. And the Nordics, yeah. So he like came up with his program effectively to help him rehab his own knees, and then he fixed his knees, went to JUCO, did two years at JUCO, and then won himself a D one scholarship at the age of twenty three. So then he went to wherever wherever it was the school. And uh, turned up and spoke to the SNC coach, and the SNC coach was uh, gave him his like training program. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to add in some extras here because like this is my situation." And the SNC guy was just like, "No, nah, no knees over toes in my gym." Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he said to him, "He says don't do knees over toes yeah, in my gym." Yeah, no, like no chance. So it, and then in his head, he was like, "Oh well," he he, he said he was like young, he didn't know how to like. You know, basically go so back to, to him, off, and, and yeah. And so in his mind, he was like, "Fuck, I'm mean, gonna have to go and do my extras in my spare time with you know playing D one training." And those basketballs schedules are intensive. Well, they're right? playing like three times a week. Yeah, three, four times a week. It's crazy. I don't. I mean, when I first got told that, I couldn't believe. It. Yeah, sorry. It, no, it's, it, that is mad. To be fair, so yeah, it was gonna be a lot for him to like do his stuff on top, and then um, some rule came in where basically because he was so old. They weren't sure whether he was eligible and he was going to have to appeal it. And he ended up just not going D1 and, and turned into a coach. But it, it made me think, what he was saying was like, what I'm teaching now is going to be in the textbooks in like 30 years time. His, like, his stuff's like cutting edge stuff. And the problem was like the strength coach just doing his job, right? But he's teaching what's in the textbooks now and knees over toes in the textbooks. So he thinks he's doing the right thing. And it just made me think, like, how important of a concept that is to, like, fully understand that just because something's in a textbook, in a, being taught in a school, yeah, yeah, yeah. being taught in a university, doesn't necessarily mean it's right. it's right. And, like, science is an ever-evolving field. And they say that the textbooks are, like, 30 years behind. So it's a sad state of affairs because you think you know, when new information comes out, that stuff will be updated as quick as yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just not the case. And and I was looking into a guy that watches this podcast actually messaged, messaged me because um, I put up on my story, like, an example day of eating. And uh, he messaged me saying, oh, similar to what I do, but I've had some blood drawn and it came back with, I can't remember what he said exactly, but it was like high one of his cholesterol markers was high yeah so he, he said that he, he was starting to cut out fats because of it and i've listened to a few podcasts and, and kind of heard over the years that the whole cholesterol it's a total myth isn't it yeah. complete myth yeah it's, it, it's bollocks so, but like i didn't know the details of it to like you know tell him you know all this that and the other so i started like digging into it and i've only i kind of taken it line by line so i was looking at total cholesterol first and that's as far as i've got but Go on the NHS website, I actually wrote it down, and the cholesterol guidelines for total cholesterol is below 193 milligrams per deciliter. That's what their guideline is. Anything over that's high. And then I looked at the first study I looked at, was with st- published in Nature, so uh, like a big medical journal, uh, sorry, big journal. Uh, it was looking at 12.8 million adults, so massive cohort of people yeah, yeah. over 12 years. And it was looking at total cholesterol and all cause mortality, so like any cause of death. And the the generally the lowest rate of all cause mortality was people with theirs between 210 and 249. <laughs> so it's like completely at odds with what, what the NHS website says. The thing is, if you said that to someone, they'd just be like, oh, well, I can find your study which says the opposite. Yeah, and, and, the, and that, that, that's the annoying, that is, that is irritating. Yeah. Because because I've heard so the people the only I've heard you speak about it I've heard Origins Nutrition uh, what's his name Dom yeah Dom, Dom yeah. speak about it I've heard of course Liver King speak about yeah. it and they all say high cholesterol is fine as long as you don't eat sugar yeah it's now what it is it's, the issue occurs when you have high fat and high sugar in your system I think it's, so and they, is it triglycerides yeah triglycerides yeah. so I, I again so I'll be able to speak about more on this in a few weeks because I'm, I'm going to go real in depth on it and write an article on it at the moment but I think it's that basically you do you've got to do an equation where you look at your triglycerides in relation to some of the other cholesterol levels and that throws up a number which is a much more accurate predictor of uh, heart disease yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just I just wanted to bring it up because I thought it was like just a super important point to make. 
Now, I am um, blemish just another example would be you speak to doctors and they'd say, Well, your BMI is high, yeah, but then they themselves would say, But obviously, BMI is bollocks, yeah, and they'd be like, Oh, your BMI is still high. It, it's a strange kind of like mental loop that a lot of people are caught in, yeah. Well, they'll go and see, they'll go and see the doctor, and I'll say, Oh, you said my BMI is a bit over, and they'll say to themselves, But I know it's bullshit, yeah. But they'll still acknowledge they wouldn't they won't just like cast it aside oh well BMI is high so I've got to lose I don't really on but then well, it doesn't take into consideration BMI is like one of the foot you learn that at school don't you that BMI is bollocks yeah it's the like, BMI is bollocks it doesn't care it's just it's a real it's, a, it's like incredibly similar it's like height plus weight equals math it's literally that so yeah. you could be like fucking LeBron James and they'd say you're obese yeah well, so it, it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't take into account muscle mass and, and you know... Which is the thing, and then they're, they're, they're the thing is, though, the doctors, you'd have to be some sort of idiot to not realise that that's a completely bogus uh, marker. But then doctors still tell people they're high. I, don't, I really don't understand why you would just leave it. Yeah. If, if you think it's bollocks, which you must do, why don't you just leave it? Yeah. Rather than, like, rather than go for the whole rigmarole and say, oh, well, you know, you have got high. Yeah. BMI, which happens all the time. Yeah. We have got high cholesterol, so you need to go on eat some shredded wheat and red top milk. Yeah, yeah. But it's still how that's no start to the day, is it? You want <laughs> that's no start to the day. Yeah, it's bad, mate. Because like it, it, it's it's a weird system how it's set up as well. Because whenever you see like so, speak it like I haven't been. I can't remember the last time I've been to the GP or or the, the hospital or anything like that. It's been a, it's been a, like a long time, but. It's like the impression I get, and I could be wrong, is that like doctors are always like rushed off their feet. Like they have never got a lot on their plate. I don't know. Is yeah, they've got they've got, and, and but it, shouldn't they be being kept up to date with all the latest research? That should be like an important thing. So feels like they should there should be some time carved into their day by like the system, which you know for them to keep up to date with the latest medical journals. Because it's like, you can't be given, imagine, so taking knees over toes example, the, the information that's in the textbooks now is 30 years old. And then you've got a doctor who's in his 50s that went to medical school when he was 25. So all of a sudden, <laughs> he learned the information that was 30 years old, 25 years ago. So his information is now 50 55 years. years old. <laughs> it's like <laughs> madness. His knees over, knees over toes is pretty much... But I suppose the, the name's a giveaway. Get your knees over your toes. Yeah. yeah. But there, and, and that's just like, so you don't do any squats. So any... No, I think I think he does do squats as part of his program. your knee goes over your toe. No, so the, with the, the knees over toes thing that he does is he does split squats, so like lunges. Yeah, so like real deep. Yeah, where the knee goes like miles over the toes. And his, uh, the idea is that he's like bulletproofing, you know, your tendons and working on that stuff that people never work on. And I can't remember the exact numbers, but I'm sure you won't have to do much digging if you go on his Instagram because he posts it quite a lot. It's like, he took his jump from like a measly, you know, and he's got like a massive dunk now. He just completely transformed his athleticism. But the thing you could, you could uh, that for me is like, is this guy a complete one-off? Or, we, you know, because you could probably go to a lot of strength and conditions and they just say, oh yeah, you know, that's all just bollocks. Like, yeah. what about him? He did it. Like that, and then, but then a lot of people, I imagine, and I don't know, I don't even know what the needle of the two guys looks like. I imagine it's, oh yeah, well he, they say oh yeah, well he took steroids. Yeah. Which is what people say about, like loads of people like flipping Liver King and he's been brought up and like, he's had a lot of air time. So yeah, so. But I just feel a bit like, mate, like yeah, loads of people take steroids, like in the normal day to day world. Like, you go to these like spit and sawdust gyms, half the guys are on, 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 on steaks and none of them look like him. Yeah. And he seems like he's and he seems like he's doing pretty well for it, living in a mansion, driving around quad bike, shooting bazookas or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, flamethrowers. Well. Yeah, flamethrowers. I'm like, fair enough. I yeah. think he garners. We actually, when we get Sam Harrison in for episode two, he's got a lot of, mate, a lot he, of hate. He's he's coming in hot, mate. We're going to talk about Egypt. Egypt. We've got to talk about Liverpool. We've got to talk about indoor powder. plumbing. Yeah, indoor plumbing. Ain't ancestors eating potatoes yeah. rather than All organ sorts. meat. Um, he thinks you make some sort of potato capsule. <laughs> But mate, on, on that point, it's like, I listened to Wim Hof the other day and he was on, He well, I'm sorry, I listened to him the other day, but it was a fucking episode from ages ago with Russell Brand. Good episode, that. Yeah, oh mate, it's, it's the one where he takes yeah, you through the breathing. That's my favourite. 
guided Wim Hof is that one. Yeah. I try and listen to that. That's the, it's good. If no one's ever, it's like, I actually screenshot it the other day, so I'll put in the show notes on what point it is. But if you listen, like Wim takes Russell Brand through the breathing and then at the end, you can like follow along and then you hold your breath at the end and you can just listen to him having a conversation when you're in this like trippy, yeah, yeah. blissful state. It's so good. But basically that's exactly what Wim said. They were, he, they did these experiments on him where they were injecting him with strains of the flu and he was able to overcome it through breath work and, uh, in the hospital. And they said to him, that was the first thing they said, oh, you're just like an outlier. You're, you know, the early ice man. And then he, tra- he, uh, he took like a whole group of people and trained them to do it in, 10 days or something like he, he tells the whole story properly i can't remember the details but yeah i, I just think and i think that's with the going back to the knees over toes guy like that's one of the things he says on the podcast joe rogan asked him how he got big and he was like uh just in-person results so obviously yeah. he's in, applying he, what he's doing onto other people and it's working but that's the so we've got three people there who or oh, so you've got Need over toes guy, you've got Wim Hof and, and, and Wes Watson, which we've before. Yeah. But we're both kind of binging a little bit at the minute. Right. If anyone hasn't watched Wes Watson, watch. I'm, I'm a fan of his earlier work. It's two years ago when he was first sort of on the come up. Unbelievable ridiculous content. Like, yeah. So, like, so magnetic. I've been listening to him all day. I'm yeah. doing sleep. <laughs> it's quite intense. Yeah, he's a very intense guy. But he, and all three of them, because his whole thing is like, does he doesn't read books? He just does the thing that his method he's discovered for himself, and that's yeah. what works for him. Yeah. And his method is super strict wake up time, macros, really hard workouts. Yeah. Uh, like regularly and no days off. Yeah. And Wim Hof's is he found out as a breath work with the extreme cold, cold and extreme heat. Yeah. These are the toes is you know. But all the, the common thread among them was they, they use themselves as the guinea pig and they yeah. found the method that works for them and then they put it out and then they get all these, you know, and they all blow up. Yeah. So people do it and they're like, oh, this all works. And it also shows that there's loads of roots up the mountain, you know? And, and I think that the one, another commonality that I noticed between the three of them is they all really give a fuck about helping people. Yeah, yeah, they like, do. Like, they really want it. Like, that was, you hear that with the knees over the toes guy when he's talking on Joe Rogan, it's like, he has a genuine mission with his life to help people and that's like you know his specialty is you know the human body helping people move through a lot of the stuff he's doing I know he's helping athletes but a lot of the stuff he talks about is like helping old people you know like be able to be more mobile as they're getting older and be able to carry the shopping and stuff like that and that's why he goes on about the backward sled sled drags it's like one of the least things he posts about because you know no one likes videos of people dragging sleds backwards they want to see you doing nordics and these like yeah, weird yeah, yeah. squats it just looks cooler but he said that's the thing he implements most with people because it, it just can help he doesn't do heavy does he like light uh well it depends what you talk about like the nordics because do you do much nordics yeah, yeah i love nordics twice a week yeah that's so they're like obviously that's a really because he does those with plates Eight contraction yeah, it's a massive contraction. Do you do a full Nordic? No. Yeah. How do I do you it with a band on. Do you... I do it with, a, I do it with, a, with like bands on my shoulders. Yeah, and do you press? No, no, no I get sometimes. So I can do a few with the red bands on. Yeah. Then they give me a hand at the bottom. Yeah. So I'm getting fatigued. You have to keep your glutes and everything switched on on your posterior chain. Don't you? Yeah. So the... but he don't keep, do a full Nordic with plates. Yeah, mate. He does, honestly, he does absolutely ridiculous thing. Yeah, he does like full Nordics with 20 kilo plates in his arms. He's, he's freakishly strong. So like, although you you wouldn't say he's not he's not doing like two hundred kilo squats, but for I mean, that's, Nordic, that that's yeah, really yeah. strong. Um, but yeah, he, he, one of the if anyone's listening and want to get into Nordics, so that what he says his advice for him is to put cushions under like your um, yeah until you can yeah. yeah yeah like under your stomach so and just raise yourself up so your like hips are raised up so then you fire from a higher position and when we were at Loughborough like they would always tell you to do the Nordics with you know pushing yourself off the bench and yeah. I, I would never improve I would literally make no progress yeah <laughs> three sets of five and, and same thing and since starting using the cushions I just got getting better and better so I got to the point where I, start, I started with three sets of five with two cushions worked my way up to three sets of ten dropped one cushion and now I'm at like three sets of six it's not cushion. it's not it's not Nordics it's not glue ham raise it's Nordics with like a flat board yeah and you put your feet and you lower your whole body down and then back up exactly yeah 
So do you push yourself off the bottom or when you use the cushions you can just you just fire straight up, you like contract your glutes and just like launch yourself straight back up. It works a treat, mate. I need to try that. Yeah, yeah. Is really... he is he what what would he be wearing on his feet? Barefoot? Uh no, he wears those. I don't even know what the brand the trainers are. You you must see a Mo wears them. They're like the they're like the pim solely type shoes. But they've yep. got like the blue or red branding or something. I'll show you a What 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 what's good about them? I don't I ain't got a clue, man. It's what he wrote, he's reps him. Yeah, I just want because I don't want to do <laughs> these, 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 bio, these biohacker these biohacker shoes, yeah, it's just seems we're going seems we're going back to like I don't know, sort of a you know, like PE, year four PE. Yeah, yeah, I dunno man, I'm I'm still I'm I'm in the market for some trainers at the moment, so if anything's Yeah, you really make trainers last, don't you? Any slides. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, sorry. You're about 15 years they're, old. They're knackered, mate. They're done. They're done. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about today was, uh, so I was, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about like the Buddhist or kind of what was made popular, the Buddhist idea of like we're all one consciousness, right? Yeah. So like everyone comes from source or like this one origin space. And it just got me thinking like how hamstring we are in Western culture by scientific materialism and the fact that stuff needs scientific studies to be people feel like they're getting hoodwinked if there's not a scientific study. Yeah, if there's not something. a peer reviewed journal about it. They don't trust they don't like trust their own eyes or trust how they feel about something, trust their own gut instinct. Yeah, exactly. Don't trust your own gut instinct. The other thing as well is these concepts, whether they're right or not, they make you into a better person. Like, you go out and live mm. your life in a better way. So I don't understand what, or, you know, I'd love to know what your opinion is on, like, whether, you know, it's worth believing in something just for the sake of it making you a right person, whether it's for the sake of it making you a better person, whether it's technically correct well, That's completely gone out of the window, hasn't it? Like, the, the it used to be religion filled that void of... I think what gave people a moral pathway. Yeah, yeah. And quite strange that my grandmother is religious. Yeah. Um, but it seems only out of like force of habit. She goes every Sunday and she's always gone every Sunday, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And but it doesn't I don't I don't feel that she's a I feel like she believes in it, but it's not sort of it's more like it's kind of indoctrination to be honest. Well, they, I feel like they, I know what you mean. There's a definite difference. Like one a person that I feel like um, takes religion and, and really runs with it in a good way is have you seen uh, is it Last Chance You with the the basketball players yeah with the latest season with the coach and he's like really he loves he goes to the church he's like a pastor yeah I church. know who's on my head. but he through like reading the bible he's like developed some really solid principles that he goes and lives his life by yeah and he seems like he's taken that implemented it into his life and he's just like really good dude because of it um and yeah it, it just got me thinking it's like it's crazy how we're like we need something to be right to be able to believe in it why can't you believe in something which you're you're not sure if it's right why don't you just try it and then just and see how the, the thing is though you can you can come in and say oh, i've been trying this it's been working for me and people can just go like bollocks yeah because they haven't even though you, you're literally saying, no, I've, I've done it, I've, I've experienced it, and I can tell you it does work, no, it doesn't. Yeah. It's just because there isn't, and what did Richard Nixon say? If you want to convince people something's true, put it on TV, Yeah. and they'll, and they'll believe it, which, which just does seem to be the case. Yeah. And now also there's this culture of the debunking culture, oh, yeah. where you'll say something, oh, well, that was debunked by someone I don't know at a time undisclosed <laughs> in a way that I'm, and a, me- a method by which I'm not sure, but it was debunked <laughs> by... Yeah. It's, it's total outsourcing. It's so, or someone else discovered that. Yeah, yeah. I just feel it's... I mean, you spoke about it on the Rediscover Human podcast with Tim. Um, it would be good to get on to some point, actually. Yeah, well, yeah, he's going yeah, to come down in the next couple of months. That he... That people aren't open to even having some conversations. And the, the, the reason to not have it is well, that's stupid. Yeah. And I don't... I think I wouldn't have some conversations with you. But then... Um, like what? But then I think, to me, saying something stupid would be like, oh, I think that, I think that like a big plasticine monster is gonna like take over the, the world. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, that's a bit stupid, that man. I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if you're 
But then, do you know what I mean? Something that wacky. Yeah. That to me seems stupid. Yeah. But I don't see how something could be thought of in the same way. Yeah. If when actually there are these, there, there's some stuff where there's there's clearly grey areas that, yeah. that, could, that could be delved into. Be like, oh no, that's either been debunked, proven, or it's stupid. Yeah. Those are the three avenues you can go down. There's never okay. Well, let's actually explore this. And I don't, I don't think it's like if you're having a discussion with someone, you kind of want a discussion. If they, if they can come back at you is you're stupid, you're a moron. Yeah. It's like we are cool. I will win. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. Mate, another example of it as well is like, so Paul Check always talks about like life force energy in animals, and like when you eat an animal, you take on yeah, that yeah, life yeah, force. Yeah. And uh, he talks about you know honoring that animal by like going out into the world and like doing good rather than you know. You, you think that cow's just become you and now you're being a dickhead and he, he's along for the ride and he can't, you know? So, I, like, make a joke out of that's it. That's super woo That's like a, it's a super woo-woo concept. Super woo-woo concept. But whether you believe it or not, if you buy into that, it makes you go out into the world and yeah. be a better person. So I don't see the problem with woo-woo concepts or stuff that isn't necessarily... It'll benefit your life. Yeah, if it benefits your life. You just got to be open to this stuff, you know? But I completely agree. But then the other thing as well is there's this disconnect between business, not business and pleasure, but between happiness and pleasure. Where I think people mistake pleasure for happiness because yeah. we're told in, in to basically, um, to, in society nowadays, you're seen as just an idiot if you're not doing everything you can to pretty much get ahead. Or to just enjoy yourself. Yeah. But I'm all for enjoying myself now. I like going out, you know, having a good time, I like having a having a laugh. Yeah. Um, but like it's sort of to, to be virtuous is almost it's akin to being stupid. Oh you're not or nice guys finish last, you know that. The the idea of living like a virtuous life, even if it you know, even if it could be to your detriment, say, especially financially, you're seen as dumb, basically. And I think that and also there's this like nihilism behind it where I call it like the Ricky Gervais mindset, where we're all just, there's nothing afterwards, there's nothing before, we're just these these flesh sacks running around doing what we want. And if you can get away with something, you may as well get away with it, yeah. because nothing matters. Which is a, which is a, which is fucking dangerous yeah. concept to live by, because it's, it would actually, what's the reason to not, to, to, to do any good, or to be a good person, if there's no, there's nothing, there's no sort of, meeting your maker aspects there's no judgment or anything it's just do what you want well another example would be karma right if you buy into the idea of karma yeah. that makes you a better person and I think there's there's a big issue at the moment where there's just so many role models out there in the world that are just not you know living virtuous lives you know and, and children growing up looking up to these people and you know I, th- I feel like that's got to change otherwise the world's going to go down a dark path I don't, I don't know, I do feel with, I felt for the last little bit, we're, we're in a kind of transitionary period. I think people are starting to, they, they, maybe they don't want to go down, you know, the, the, it seems like the, the road's becoming divided. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people are starting to choose which side they want to go down, which makes me feel like, actually a bit like, fuck, this is, we're in a big period. And for whatever reason we were brought about now, there's a big, something big's happening now. And I think people are choosing the side they want to be on. And it's it's happening slowly but surely. And there's some people who've who, who sort of know where <laughs> sitting on that fence. And they're not sitting on the fence, but there's some people I'd say, probably you and me, who know the side that we're on, yeah. having been there for a while. Yeah. And there's people that are like way far the other way. And like, you know, both both of them sort of come on over. But then in a few years' time it's gonna be, you know, I think in a few years' time the whole thing's gonna be completely resolved. Well it's, it's interesting Nick, that the world feels like it's speed it like the last few years just feels like it's been fast. I don't know whether it's because of like the age we're at and and you know no, I don't I don't want I don't want to <laughs> no it's not because it's like I want Peter Pan syndrome now. I <laughs> so there's I I think it's because the the fact the world's been kind of put on standstill. Yeah. I think it has made everything it's become a bit more monotonous. Because normally and I was like thinking about it um I was talking about that the other day. It's like in 2019, he went to Bali and then he swung by Australia on the way home yeah. to see his mum yeah. uh, and see his family with one of the other lads and then he just came back to England. He like swung back up and it's like the idea of doing that now is is just impossible. You couldn't do it. The world has changed. So the world, the world has changed and 
I think that because it used to be for us anyway it, was, uh, it used to be that summer was like it was a big it was a chunk of time off and you could do whatever you want the, the world was your oyster go off and do it mm. but because that's kind of been taken away from people I feel that the, the whole 12 month cycle has been broken up by much everyone's yeah. at home the whole time no one can really get away without all this these hoops to jump through yeah I just think it's made things a bit more monotonous. People, it's not. I don't. I actually don't think it's particularly good for you to be at home the entire time. Yeah, yeah. You know? Is um, it? Yeah. It'd be, it'd be, it's going to be interesting to see how it all unfolds. Hopefully. Hopefully, back, positive. Back to normal. Back to normal. That'd be good. Uh, uh, what are we looking at? We're at one o five. Should we wrap it up there? I think uh, just before uh, we finish, I want to say that we got a, a sweet guest coming on next week. Uh, Brendan, he's a coach of mine. Uh, he's going to come on and talk about actually kind of leading off what we were talking about uh, just now, like what it means to be a man in modern society, uh, so, which I think will be a really cool topic to cover. And we might do, uh, he's really, he does this exercise where he talks about setting goals and visualisation and stuff like that as well. So we might touch on that, but I'll speak to him about this week. Wicked. Uh, do you want to do your... your... Just Harry at Williams 91 Instagram. <laughs> oh, I'll just generally plug. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine is ape underscore nutrition on Instagram if you've got any questions. Uh, apenutrition.co.uk is what the website. I've uh, got a discount code set up AS10. Get you 10% off any of the products, including these two new ones that will be out next week. Um, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Sweet, man. That was a good one. Back to it. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, flow up there. Oh, God, my legs. It's a good blend of joint, having to clear in the